Welcome back to The Quantum Truth, Sherry and Shara Unleashed. And today we are going to talk about how labels are stuckiness, right? So how, how do we get stuck with labels? <gasps> oh my God, they become our identifiers. And, and people ask you for your ID. Mm, and right. so when we get in that stuckness, guess what? Our left computer brain is in the past. Huh. And this is what happens. It affects our behavior. It affects what we create, but also how we create mm -hmm. and what we end up having from what we just created. So many of the times, like when people are identified or labeled that they have depression or anxiety or right. cancer or that there's that emotional component. But what about if you're identified as stupid? Mm. Ooh. Right. So here's an example. Let's say, Cassidy, that you're six years old mm -hmm. and I am the uh, authority figure. Right. And so I say to you, this is how we get stuck in the left computer brain because the brain does not know what time it is. Doesn't. Has no clue. And time spells tie me, tie me up. So you're six years old, and I'm an authority figure, and I'm having a bad day, but you don't ma doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a parent, a teacher, mm -hmm. uh, someone your own age, whatever. And I say to you, Cassidy, you're stupid. Right. You're stupid. Well, in this left computer brain is this little molecule of emotion, mm -hmm. and it goes right into a cell or cells. And that cell can be connected to your respiratory system, mm. your adrenal system, your skeletal system, your muscular system, whatever the system is, and it starts building. Huh. And so now let's say you're 16 and you've had a couple stupid experiences. And so now you're 16 and you go to work and the supervisor walks in and looks around and said, this is stupid. And so you've been taught to take it personally. Yeah. And it starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And it starts taking up. And as you get older, let's say it hits your respiratory system. Right. So you start having breathing problems. Or you have bronchitis. Or you have pneumonia. Or you have cancer of the lungs. It's building, building, building. Mm. Okay. So now let's say you are so brilliant. And you went to Harvard. And then you went to Wharton Business School and you got your degree and you are a CFO of a Fortune 50 company right. and you are making tons of money and you are in Manhattan. I don't know about today, but you are in <laughs> Manhattan. And so you walk into the boardroom and there is a de there's this huge board table and there's the CEO and all the board members are around you and the CEO says Cassidy your report is stupid we didn't do this this and this how old are you so well, I'm back at six years old exactly boom yeah now we have the onset of the stroke mm. or the aneurysm or the cancer or whatever it is and then it gets labeled now you have this huh. so people come to me when they fill out my intake sheet and they say I have this. That's their label. And they're proud. Uh, oh, they are so right. proud. Oh, my God. I, now I know what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. Got a little goofy. And so that's why I ask them, what does this mean? And so is it meaningful or full of mean? And so they get hmm. stuck. But I then I ask them, so when did it start? Oh, right. no, Sherry, I've been diagnosed. Die. Diagnosed. And I have to go on a diet. So it, real and, get, and guess what happened? You're six years old. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that you're 55 and you're a CFO. You're, you are six years old emotionally, and that is the past. So diagnosed, I really want to do that. So is that the point of death? For an individual almost, like diagnosed, when you're diagnosed because somebody told you of that, that's why you're, you die, your identity dies almost. Exactly. Your, because your real identity. Your real identity, of, right. that's exactly what happens. Because somebody and, else just gave you that label, and you're identifying with that label that they gave you, correct? Because they're the expert. Because they're the expert, and you believe they're the expert. You Therefore, belief systemed. Yeah, you, you, they just programmed you because, oh, you're you're the psychologist, so if you diagnose me as bipolar, I have to be bipolar because that's what the program says. Yeah, I wonder how many bipolar 
people are pole dancers. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I mean, supposedly, again, I, and I bring this up, I'll be very candid on this, is that I, I was diagnosed as bipolar too as well. And, and when, when I started to believe, I, you know what, I, I'm going to be whatever I want. And and yeah, I have these, these, these trends, but what I've realized is that being self-aware and being conscious is what really overwhelms those trends. Exactly. Those trends of behavior. And so we have to label them. And yeah. so that's not the truth. And right. so, and this is what happens. And this was very impacting to me. This is way before I started doing this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my sister in law at the University of Michigan was told that she had six months to live. And for some reason, I tracked it to the day. Wow. To the day. That's a prediction. Wow. So I don't care if it's who is making the prediction. Mm. So I had a lot of predictions about me when I had that third near death and I had right. all this stuff. And I thought, no, that's where I came up with cellular memory. Mm -hmm. I'm laying in the hospital. I'm a mess. And the predictions didn't sound so good. Right. And I thought, you know what? There, and I, I thought, not thinky thinky, there had to be something smarter in my body than this brain and the word cellular memory came to me. Hmm. It was, and then the cellular memorization was the accident right, or right. the disease. So you can go, your body is so brilliant. So when, you're, when the sperm hits the egg, you're in. The minute, I don't, we're, we're not doing politics here or, you know, for this or for that. Yeah. Get over yourself because I talk to babies in the womb. <laughs> the minute the sperm hits the egg, you're in. So your nose knows to be a nose cell and your toe knows to be a toe cell. Otherwise, you'd have a fingernail at the end right. of your nose. Right. And then people say, well, what if somebody that came in with a disease that is part of what we'll have to talk about later, but that's about karma lessons and reincarnation bullshit. Those oh. are three other labels that mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. So when we take it on, then we start existing, not living in the past. Right. And that encompasses, or it says, you know what? Um, Cassidy, you're bipolar. I bet someone in your family is bipolar. Yeah, of course. And, and so then what you do is you have to validate the invalidation right. of yourself to validate the other person. And here's my Sherryism. Mm. Say, I am the only one. I am the only one. That can validate me. That can validate me. And for those outside of me. And those outside of me. Who validate me. Who validate me. I thank them. I thank them. And for those that don't? And for those that don't? Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, fucking well. Oh, fucking well. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? No, I do. And then you're going to validate the expert. Right. Now, I'm not wronging the expert. They went to school. They got yeah. all their stuff. But they really don't know how smart the human body is. And, and they don't really know how stupid, without judging it, is the left computer brain. And you're not even using the right side. So we take in because they're the experts. And so I never tell my clients, I ask them, how do you feel about that? And that's why they've gotten rid of stage four cancer. They've gotten off of drugs or whatever it is, but it was their choice. I did not heal them. I provided them with the tools that they actually actualized and it got better. And people say, well, I thought you were supposed to die. Mm -hmm. Well, I changed my, yeah, uh, no, it, I changed your mind. And, and a lot of times people come to you uh, if in your in your in your quantum pathics, right? Quantum pathics. Well, the Anshar method. Yeah, the Anshar method. It, it, because they don't have any other options, which they've told you only have X amount to live, or you have to go through this massive sur physical surgical uh, surgery, and a lot of them come out uh, with with results, right? Yes, and and it's amazing. I actually worked with this wonderful lady in Illinois, right? And she had a torn meniscus, right. and they were going to operate. Right. Well, guess it, what? Yeah. We worked over the phone. And then it, it healed itself because she talked to her cells. I encourage you to talk to your body. But this is funny. The doctor said to call him. So I didn't. He said, don't ever call me again. I go, well, you're the one that asked me. <laughs> so it, because they think that it's taken away. Actually, you can assist more people. And that's why I'm going to be training the trainers and training the facilitators. Right, uh, and and we definitely need that, especially on the in the healthcare system and the education. System. We are creating a new profession. It's going to be called the future of medicine. Now, love it. All right, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining us on the Quantum Truth, Sherry and Shara Unleashed. 
You can always find more information about Sherry and what she does at www.sherryandshara.com. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.